What's good? Brian Tong here, and Apple just released the official updates for iOS 26.1 and iPadOS 26.1 and macOS Tahoe 26.1 with new features that matter. So we're going to get into all of that, and we're going to start with iOS 26.1 because it's going to affect the most people. Now, there are a lot of tweaks here and there, but the biggest change is the new liquid glass transparency toggle to either keep the glass effect, which can still be hard to read at times or switch to a more opaque tinted look like before. Now go to your settings, then go to display and brightness, and you'll see a liquid glass option. Click on that. From there, you can choose between clear, which is the more transparent to see content underneath it, or tinted that increases its opacity and adds more contrast. And I know that I'll be switching my parents over to the tinted mode because it's just easier to read. And my first impressions at WWC back in June were that they needed to add the ability to turn the effect on or off. Now during the betas, they were able to find a better middle ground for liquid glass that made it more legible, but it's still hard to read at times. And I'm glad they listened to both sides and have given us the option because everything is so much more readable in tinted mode. Now liquid glass still exists even if you select the tinted option in certain apps like the camera app, the navigation on the bottom, still liquid glass. And it still remains the same in Control Center. Those buttons do not change. But it's really apparent on things like the lock screen notifications when the tinted mode is on, that's where it makes its biggest impact when you see the difference. Now Apple also gives you an option to turn off the lock screen swipe gesture that opens the camera app. Now you can either hit the camera button on screen, you can physically press the camera control button if your iPhone has one, or just swipe left on the screen. You might not have even known you could do that, but it sometimes would have people's camera app open in their pocket and they wouldn't realize it until it got really hot. And I'm one of those people, it happens. So now if you go to the settings and then go to camera and scroll down to the bottom, there's an option to turn off lock screen swipe to open camera. There was no way to do this before and you would have had to disable the camera app entirely, but now this option takes care of that. You can also turn off the new phone haptics when a call is connected or dropped. All you gotta do is go to settings, then scroll down to the apps, and then once inside there, keep scrolling to find the iPhone app. Once in there, scroll halfway down and you'll see the option to turn the haptics on or off when a call is connected or dropped. I think you turn this off, it probably saves you a little bit of juice. Maybe a few minutes, not too much over the course of the day, but just a little matters. Now the alarms and timers interface has been updated in iOS 26.1 and this is a welcome one. How many times have you just tapped away at your phone when you're half awake and you weren't sure if you hit snooze or stop the alarm. Well, you can still snooze by tapping the oversized button, but to turn off the alarm, it requires a slide from left to right to stop it. So now you won't accidentally tap it and think you went back to snooze when you actually killed the alarm. This is a very practical fix if you've ever screwed up here, like some people here as well. Now, Apple Music gets the ability to swipe on the music player to switch songs. Now, I like this slide from right to left to get to the next track you wanna hear, or swipe from left to right to hear the previous track that you wanna hear again. There's also a new Apple TV app that adopts the new logo with a liquid glass design and then this blended rainbow of colors on the bottom half of it. The name Apple TV Plus is no more and the streaming service is now called Apple TV and it exists in the Apple TV app. This is a new change. Now this here, this next one isn't related necessarily to iOS 26.1, but the Apple One service also gets a new colorful logo following the Apple TV logo update. And you can see it in the details of the new Apple TV website. It's just hidden in there. You just scroll to find it, but it's an Apple icon split into six slices, and then each slice represents a color that corresponds to one of the services in the Apple One premium plan. So for those rabid Apple fans who need to know everything possible, that Apple One logo mention was for you. All right, home screen folders have their name of the folder aligned to the left side now instead of the center alignment, which also matches the alignment changes made in the settings app. The iPhone keypad now uses liquid glass for its numbers. It all just really looks white to me, but if you wanna see the difference between the clear and tinted version, the tinted version has just, just the slightest tad bit more of drop shadow, but there is barely any difference. It is still a change that I had to let you know. Now, if you're watching videos in the Photos app, right, you have your photo collection, you find a video, the slider for scrubbing through those videos has a new look, 
and then it implements the liquid glass when it's over like on top of a video clip in landscape mode. You can see through it, you can see that transparency. That is different. Also, the AirPods live translation feature gets support for new languages including Japanese, Korean, Italian, and Chinese for both Mandarin traditional and simplified. And this works with AirPods Pro 2, AirPods Pro 3, and AirPods 4 with ANC. But remember, in my tests, you can only take advantage of live translation in a quieter and really controlled environment. Even just trying to use it out on the street, that did not work for me and it was plain just disappointing. And other people experience the same thing in louder environments. Not even super loud, just slightly loud. So I think there needs to be some work done there still. Now there's other smaller tweaks and changes in iOS 26.1, but overall, these are really the noteworthy ones to me that stand out for me. All right, let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Soundcore. This is the Soundcore Work, a coin-sized AI voice recorder, and it will definitely improve your productivity. Just press the button on the side to record, and it captures all conversations within five meters. Now here's the coolest feature. It has what they call double tap marking technology, so you can double tap on it while it's recording to mark a spot or a point that was important for you. The key content will be automatically highlighted in the transcription and summarization. Who is this for? Well, I can think of everyone from students who want to record lectures to working professionals that want to record and document conversations large or small. It allows you to stay focused knowing that you have a recorder basically taking notes for you and then you have all that information accessible to you later. I could easily see myself using this in an interview for information gathering like I did on a recent trip to Arkansas where I learned about the harvesting season. Soundcore Work has AI-driven transcription with up to a 97% accuracy, and it can distinguish and rename different speakers. It offers AI-enhanced summarization with 25-plus summary models supporting multi-language translation. It also makes sure to protect your data and privacy security. It's ultra-compact, ultra-light, and always ready to go. You can click the link in the description to enjoy six months of free pro member benefits and use the code SOUNDCOREAI to get a limited time $35 off. Okay, let's get back to the OS's and let's talk iPad OS 26.1 and you're gonna get a lot of the iOS 26.1 improvements that I just talked about, but the biggest one here is slide over that comes back with a new redesign. Now, this works with Apple's new windowing system that some people have jumped on board with while others want the simpler and straightforward split screen back. Slide over allows you to assign an open app or window by doing a long press on those traffic lights at the top left corner, right? You see the green, yellow, red, and then select enter slide over. You'll see a liquid glass border appear around the edges of this app or window, and it lets you stash it off to the right side of the display or the left side. You just kind of flick it over there. And then you can always bring it back by swiping on the side it's on, and it will always be on top of whatever else you have going on. You can resize it however you want. You can only assign one app or window for this slide over feature. So really just one thing, and then you stash it either on the left side or the right side. Now it can be an app like Messages or a social media app that you like to check up on once in a while, but you don't want it to get in the way of what you're working on, and that's where it comes in handy. Slide over has been heavily requested, and it returns in a new way for the new iPad windowing system. Part of me still wishes here that maybe they offer a basic mode and more advanced mode for this new windowing system, depending on the type of user someone wants to be. You also have the ability to do local capture with iPad OS 26.1, where you can capture high quality and video of yours while on a video call. Now what you do, you add local capture in the control center, I have it here, and then if you're on a video call with someone, you can record your side, but you can also ask the other person talking to record their own video and audio. Then you later can combine both files to edit something like a video podcast or something like that, and it makes the iPad an even more useful tool for creators, and you'll also be able to directly connect external USB microphones and control their gain levels as well. Okay, now we're gonna shift over to Mac OS Tahoe 26.1. It also gets its first major update after maybe a little bit of a rockier start, depending on who you ask. It also gives you the option to select between clear or tinted mode for liquid glass. If you want a more legible version instead of the eye candy of liquid glass, they've also improved FaceTime audio quality in low bandwidth conditions, and Apple Music gets auto mix support over AirPlay like it does with the other iOS and iPadOS updates. Now I'll be honest, I typically wait a longer time before I do any updates to my Mac because it can mess with my current software that I have, right? All the video editing apps and uh, 
what my podcast apps and some of the tools, third-party tools that I use to build my my uh, videos and podcasts out. And everything I do needs to work the way I expect it to. So honestly, I wait a good three months or so, sometimes even six, just before putting the latest Mac OS on my main machine, just because the type of user I am. It's, it's just really the smart thing to do if you're someone that's using higher end apps. But those are all some of the changes, really the significant changes that Apple just released for iOS 26.1, iPad OS 26.1, and Mac OS Tahoe 26.1. All right, that is gonna do it for this week's video. If you like what you see, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell, ding, to get all my latest videos when they drop. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, you can check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast with the latest stories and special guests. Plus, you can support all my content with an ad-free version of the podcast, early access to my content, and exclusive content at patreon.com slash Brian Tong. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace and love. <laughs>